Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 15 of Pinpoint. This one's titled, drumroll please, Confessions from the Past. Oh. Shoto entered the building and made his way up the stairs to Yaoyorozu's flat. A very nice apartment you have here, he said as she invited him inside. Oh, thank you, she gushed. Have you eaten, Shoto? I've made some ramen. That would be lovely, Yaoyorozu. I haven't had a chance to eat yet, he said, following her into the kitchen. She busied herself serving his dinner, and he took a seat at the kitchen bench, watching her absent-mindedly as he pondered his next moves, now that the inspector was hot on his tail. Shoto? Her voice snapped him out of his trance. Oh, apologies. He looked down and saw a beautiful hot bowl of noodles before him. Thank you very much, he said, taking the pair of chopsticks that she held out for him. He held them together in front of his face, hands together in prayer. Thank you for the food, he said gratefully, before digging in. Yaoyorozu watched him with pleasure as he devoured his, her homemade meal and she hummed happily to herself as she tidied up. Shoto eyed her with slight amusement and she noticed him watching her. Is everything okay? she asked, feeling quite self-conscious now that his heterochromic eyes were following her every move. He nodded, finished off a mouthful before speaking. Yes, everything is fine. It's nice to see you happy, he said, smiling softly at her. She blushed. Oh, um, that reminds me, she said, quickly changing the subject. Let me run you a bath. You're still in your beat-up clothes from yesterday. Shoto glanced down at his dirty, charred clothing. Oh, yes. If it's not too much trouble, that would be wonderful, he said, giving her a pitiful look. Not at all, she replied with a bright smile, lightly walking off down the hall to fix him a bath. He smiled to himself as he watched her go. She is very nice. A few moments later, Yao Yorozu appeared. I've laid out a bathrobe and towel for you, Shoto. Unfortunately, I don't have any men's clothes here, but I've rung my family but butler to bring some over. He shouldn't be too. Yao Yorozu, you should not have gone to such lengths, Shoto interrupted. Hush, she replied, more excited than actually angry. I won't hear another word from you. You're in my care as long as you're here, and I'll make sure that you're properly catered for. Shoto stood and walked over to Yao Yorozu, standing right in front of her so that she was forced to look up at him. He took her hands in his and brought them up to his face, kissing the back of each hand gently. I am indebted, he said, smiling softly down at her. Yaoyorozu blushed heavily. Oh, it's, it's nothing, she replied, looking away to hide how flustered she was. I will take that bath now, Shoto said, his rich low voice causing Yaoyorozu's heart to flutter. Oh, of course, she said, still looking away. Shoto released her hands and brushed past her. She always found it hard to maintain her composure when he got close. Thankfully, he didn't look back as he walked down the hall, as her knees had buckled slightly and she was holding onto the wall for support. Shoto relaxed in the warm water as it covered his body. It was a decent-sized bathtub and he was able to stretch out comfortably. He looked over and saw Yaoyorozu had placed some delicate chocolates in a bowl within reach of the tub and he smirked. She thinks of everything. He tilted his head back and let his mind swim. Yao Yorozu was making up a temporary bed in the lounge room when Shoto entered with nothing but a towel wrapped around his waist. Would you like a hand? he asked. She turned to reply but was shocked into silence at the sight before her. Shoto had always been a well-built, muscular guy, but his physique had matured since high school and seeing him completely bare-chested with a rippling six-pack and well-defined V-line was mesmerizing. Yao Yorozu, he prompted. Hmm? Oh, oh no, 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 I'm fine, I promise, she replied, slightly embarrassed at being caught staring. She added some flamboyant arm gestures for good measure to try and divert his attention. Shoto stifled a small chuckle at her erratic behaviour. Yo, Yorozu, he said, his voice sounding almost sexual. You'll make a wonderful wife someday. She froze, her heartbeat pounding in her ears. Thank you, she whispered. He turned and headed back to the bath to get a bathrobe, and she breathed a sigh of relief at his departure, then collapsed onto the makeshift bed. Why must he say these things? I'm liable to have a heart attack one of these days. Shoto returned shortly, more appropriately dressed in the robe, and sat down on the bed that Yaoyorozu had just made. She picked up the last of the spare sheets and folded them to put them away. Will you be needing more blankets? She asked Shoto as she walked off down the hall. No, thank you kindly. You've been more than accommodating. Gao Yorozu smiled happily as she replaced the items in the linen cupboard and then walked back to the lounge room. She noticed Shoto watching her again and tried to avoid eye contact. 
Is um, everything okay, Shoto? She asked, fiddling nervously with her hair. Oh, don't mind me. You are very admirable, Shoto said in a serious yet gentle tone. You have grown into a wonderful young woman, Yaoyorozu. She teared up. Shoto, please, she said shakily. Please don't say things like that when you don't mean it. It's very cruel. Her sudden shift in mood confused him and he stood up, reaching out to her. She brushed his hand away and took a step back. Yao Yorozu, please Shoto, she said, fighting to stop the tears from falling. Your kind words only wound me. I can't take it anymore. Shoto was baffled. I'm sorry, I don't follow. Don't you understand, she sobbed. I've had feelings for you ever since high school, but the fear of rejection prevented me from saying anything. And now it's too late. You've found someone already. Someone who you're willing to pursue. Someone who you've been searching for for 13 years. It hurts. She clutched her chest as though the emotional pain was now physical. Oh, you got to feel at least a little bit sorry for our dear Momo. No? Okay, well, stay tuned for chapter 16 then. <laughs>